The bonobo is thought by many to be the great ape which most closely resembles humans, both in its anatomy and in its behavior. NHK was given unlimited access to Georgia State University's Language Research Center to film all aspects of the center's research. In return, they have permitted Georgia State scientists to utilize their footage for research and presentation purposes. The particular shots in this story were selected to illustrate the differential effects of early rearing, particularly in regard to the development of linguistic capacity. These scenes reflect the normal, everyday competencies of our research subjects. This is a story about a family of bonobos, all of whom were reared at the Language Research Center, except Matata. This is the matriarch, Matata. She was wild caught in Zaire as a juvenile. her newest infant, Nima, at one year. Effort to teach Matata to use symbols and to understand speech since 1975 have failed. This is Matata's adopted son, Kanzi. For the first two and a half years of Kanzi's life, Daily efforts were underway to teach Matata lexical symbols. During his infancy, Kanzi could observe any instruction his mother received, but at the time, he appeared to pay little attention. When he was two and a half, though, while his mother was away for a few months, he spontaneously began to communicate using lexigram symbols with surprising skill. This is Panbanesha, Matata's third offspring. Unlike Kanzi, Panbanesha did not observe attempts to instruct her mother. However, she did observe her caretakers talking to each other and to her while pointing to lexical symbols on the keyboard. Hilltop. You want to go to Hilltop? Yes. We could go to Hilltop. hilltop. This is Tamuli. Matata's fourth offspring. Unlike her siblings, she was raised as a control subject. Only rarely did she experience speech or keyboard communications. Instead, she spent the first three and a half years of her life continuously with her mother Matata. Her siblings, Kanzi and Panbanesha, stayed with the family at night and on weekends, but Tamuli's exposure to language and human caretakers was minimal. Tamuli often saw Kanzi and Panbanesha use the keyboard, and because of this, she attempted to use it also. The story to be told here is about the striking linguistic and intellectual differences in this bonobo family. These differences have arisen as a direct result of each of their unique rearing experiences. This research has taken place across the last 17 years at the Georgia State University Language Research Center, located on 50 acres of forested land in Atlanta, Georgia. Funded by NICHD and Georgia State University, the mission of the Language Research Center is to help elucidate the comparative foundations of language and of cognition in both human and non-human primates. Both Kanzi and Panbanesha received their language exposure in settings like those you are about to see in the 50 acres of forest that surround the laboratory. Here, I comment on the ever-present bugs, and Panbanesha asks me to play Chase.
bug. Chase. You want to do some chasing? No effort was made to train the symbols. Instead, topics of discussion were those that were relevant to the immediate situation. Here, Pam Benicia stops to tell me where she is headed in the forest. Harry, yes. The communications directed to Kanzi and Panvenetia were as similar to those that would be directed to human children as was reasonably possible. I'm trying to get Bono to chase you. Bono, she's trying to talk to you. She's saying, Chase, and she's pointing to you. Chase. Hi. Chase. Chase and hide. Me or Bondo? Bondo, you. She wants you to go chase and hide with her. Go ahead. Chase and hide with Pam and Isha. She wants you to play with her. The play was also similar. Oh, you got my hair. Oh, you got my hair. Oh, I'll get your hair. I'll get your hair. Oh, oh, oh. oh pardon me. Back to science. Our focus has been upon communication that is spontaneous and natural. Pine needles. You want some pine needles? Okay. Little sticklies. Yeah, you can play with them later. Good For comparative purposes, human children were reared half of each day in a similar environment. Like the bonobos, their caretakers exposed them to lexical symbols as well as speech in the context of daily life. Like the apes, they visited various locations in the forest around the lab. You can't wash in that water, huh? No, no, no. That's bad, bad, bad water. I see that with some cream up there. It's bad water for washing. Getting some sticks to help you, Liz. But, you dropped your sticks. We need those little sticks. The manner in which Kanzi and Panbenicia acquired language was different from that reported for other apes. Kanzi's route to linguistic competency was that of comprehension, comprehension of spoken English in the altogether natural context of daily life. Like human children, at first Kanzi and Panbenicia were aided by context, by glance, and by gesture. Later, they were able to respond to speech alone. Here, you will see examples of language understanding during the normal flow of events, in this case a cookout. Here, no attempt is made to filter out the contextual cues, the natural gestures, the glances, and the intonations of which typical communication is composed. All of these components serve to facilitate the development of linguistic skill. What you see here are not examples of practiced feats. Campfires are infrequent and each one is different. Kanzi is asked to do whatever he might be willing to help with at the time. Later, you will see controlled tests, which are designed to eliminate gestures, glances, and the contextual assists to language understanding. Kanzi? I need you to get the hamburgers out of here, and I need you to put the hamburgers in our pan, and I'll put it on the fire, okay? You get the hamburgers. Kanzi, I want you to get the hamburgers. hamburgers. We're not gonna eat it raw. We're gonna cook our hamburger. 
Hamburgers. Hot. Gosh, we're going to put that in. Put the hamburgers in the pan. In the pan. In the pan. In the pan. Yeah, you can squish them up. Okay. Is that our biggest knife? Kanzi, we need you to cut up the apples for us, okay? We're going to put our apples in here. Good. There's some good pieces. We can put those in here. Good. Good. Put, put, put those in here. Good. Good. For our hamburger later. You have some of that ketchup. Tunzi, I need you to break this stick for Sue, please. Good. Thank you. These parts are going to go in with our hamburgers. Can you put can you put some of those in with the hamburgers? Good. No, no, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. Think your balls at where we get peaches? You think your ball is hiding at where we get peaches? You think that's where Shelly put it? Banana. Chase. Chase. You want to chase to banana. banana? Well, you remember we went bananas at the treehouse, and you put that banana in your tummy. Kanzi, your job is to put some bread on the plates. On the plates, that's right. Get some more bread for our hamburgers and put it on the plates. Some bread. Yeah, this plate. This plate needs some bread. No, this plate needs bread. Bread on each plate. Okay. That's pretty good. Thinking better, aren't you? Okay. Now, Kanzi. Now we need pickles. Put pickles on the plates. Open. On the plates, dear. Yeah, on the plates. Put your pickle on the plate. Put some ketchup on the bread. Good. On this bread. Good. On this bread. Over here. Good. 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 That'll be your plate. Yeah, you're happy. Mm. We're very happy about this part. Mm -hmm. mm. Ah, there. Hi. Oh, it's nice coming back and joining everybody. Kanji, you wanna You wanna do that? Huh? Go. What are you thinking about doing? What? I didn't hear anything. Thinking about going to peaches? Thinking about going to look out and checking out the, the peaches? Yes, we can do that. Although language comprehension emerged in the normal course of daily life, with increasing competency, it became possible to test Kanzi under highly controlled conditions. In response to the controversy surrounding the investigations of animal cognition, we designed many different tests to rule out the possibility of inadvertent cueing. Here, we prepare to test Kanzi's understanding of speech in one such setting. Kanzi will be asked to listen to speech through headphones and to select the photo which corresponds to the word he hears. He will hear the word over his headphones and a green light will signal me that he was correct, a red light if he was wrong. The alternatives are randomized and Kanzi is the only one in the room who will hear the word. I can't hear anything else. 
All right. All right. You can be Conzie again. Conzie's ready. Conzie gave me a picture of Rose. That's real good, Conzie. Real good. Our green light came on. We're going to listen on our headphones again, okay? We're all set up for you. Thank you. All right, we're going to put your pictures out on the table, Nazi. Conzie, give Sue a picture of Pinky. 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 Rose, Conzie gave Sue a picture of Pinky. Look, Conzie, you got it right. Yes. Pinky, you got it right. Yes. Good job. Good job, Conzie. Good job. All right, Rose, Conzie's putting his headphones on. Get them over his ears. All right, Rose, Conzie's ready to listen. He's listening. Conzie, Give Sue a picture of watermelon. Conzie gave Sue the picture of watermelon. Look, Conzie, that's right. You got it right. Good job. Good job. Yay, yay, yay. All right, Conzie's putting his headphones on. Conzie's getting ready. Let's get him right over your ears, Conzie. Wait now, Conzie. All right, Rose, Conzie's ready to listen. Conzi, give Sue a picture of the vacuum cleaner. Rose, Conzi gave Sue the picture of the vacuum cleaner. Good, Conzi, you got it right. Good job. Rose, Conzi showed Sue the picture of Pam Benicia. Conzi, you got it right again. You got the green light every time. Rose, Conzi's handing me a picture of popsicles. Good job, Conzi, good job. And he's also wanting to give me the eyes to show me he's done. And we have our last picture. Good job. Conzi has, of his own accord, learned the linkages between the spoken word and the printed symbol as well. He can listen to any word he knows and find the lexigram symbol that corresponds to it, even when the words are spoken by different speakers or by persons whom he does not know. Okay, Conzi's ready. Conzi, can you find egg? Egg. Egg. Okay, let me look at my card. Good job. Good job. M&M's. 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 Okay, let me look. M&M's. Good job. Are you ready? Conzie's ready again. Bunny. 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 Let me look. Bunny. Good job. Conzie's ready. Find balloon. Balloon. Find balloon. 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 Let me look. One more. One more. Balloon. Good job. One more, and then we'll have some bubble gum. Okay? Are you ready? Conzie's ready. Mushroom. Mushroom trail. Let me see. Mushroom. Well, that's pretty close, Conzie. That's very good. Okay, are you ready to listen? Sometimes, Conzie does make mistakes. Conzie, can you say matata? Matata. Okay, let me see if you're right. No, Hansi. Was that supposed to be Matata? Hansi, Matata. Turn around. Matata. Good. 
Kanzi's comprehension of speech is not limited to individual words. It extends to novel sentences as well. Here, I ask Kanzi to respond to sentences without the assistance of the contextual cues as were provided at the campfire. Each sentence is different and none have been practiced. Okay. Kanzi, go to the potty and get Pinky. Go get Pinky from the potty. Please go over to the potty and get Mr. Pinky. Remember, you put Pinky on the potty. There he is. Thank you. Kanzi, can you bite the lemon? Can you bite the lemon? Bite it. Can you take a bite out of the lemon, please? Yeah, that was a pretend bite. That was good. Now, could you bite your ball? Could you bite your ball? Good, good. Now, could you put the lemon in the water? Thank you, very nice. Open the umbrella. Open the umbrella. Open it all the way up. Do you not open it all the way up? Well, that's pretty good opening it. That's good opening it. I'll, I'll accept that. Okay. Kanzi, take the vacuum outdoors. Take the vacuum cleaner outdoors. The vacuum, take it outdoors. Outdoors. Take the vacuum cleaner outdoors. Good job, good job. Kanzi, can you give Pinky a hug? Oh, what a nice hug, what a nice hug. Okay, Kanzi, take your ball out of the water. Take your ball out of the water. Uh-huh, now take your ball outdoors. Take your ball outdoors. Very good job, thank you, very nice. To formally investigate Kanzi's comprehension in conditions which ruled out social cues, the experimenter was located in another room as shown in this diagram. Under such conditions, both Kanzi and a two and a half year old child were presented over 600 novel sentences. A simpler version of this test in which I wore a welder's mask to prevent Kanzi from seeing my face was filmed by NHK. Again, many novel sentences were presented to preclude the learning of specific responses. Kanzi, could you cut the onions with your knife? Well, that's very good. Thank you. Could you put some... Kanzi, are you listening? Could you put some soap in the water? Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Could you listen again? Okay. Kanzi? Could you pour a little Coke in the water? Could you pour some Coke in the water? Thank you, that's enough, you can, okay. Kanji, pour the Perrier water in the jelly. Thank you, that's good, that's good. You see the TV set? Could you take the TV outdoors? Could you carry the television outdoors, please? Thank you, thank you very, very much. Kanzi, can you get the pine needles that are in the refrigerator? 
Thank you very much. Kanji, can you pour some Perrier water on the doggy? Trying to pour it on his ear? Gonna pour it on his back wall? That's good, thank you, thank you. Can you put your shark in the refrigerator? Like children, sometimes Kanzi misunderstands or becomes confused, even with the simplest of sentences. Kanzi, could you open the soap? Could you open the soap? Open it up? Kanzi, where's the soap? Where's the soap? Yes, could you open it? Open, open, have you forgotten open? Open. Kanzi, don't you know how to open it? Open, 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 open. You don't know what that means? Kanzi, look, open, open. Well, that's real nice. Like children, sometimes Kanzi refuses to cooperate. Could you get a wipey out? Kanzi, stop playing with things that you want to play with. Just stop. Just stop. Stop. Overall, such tests demonstrated the Kanzi's comprehension of language was approximately equivalent to that of a normal two-and-a-half-year-old child. Both Kanzi and the child exhibited similar temporary confusions and hesitancy to respond as you have seen. But overall, both correctly responded to 70% of these novel sentences. Nor was Kanzi unique among bonobos. His younger sister, Panbanisha, also began to use lexigrams and to understand speech. In the scenes which follow, you will see attempts to compare the language comprehension skills of Panbanisha, the sister who was exposed to language, and Tamuli, the sister reared as a control subject. Okay, she's ready to listen. She got the backpack, Shelly. Very good. Thank you, Panbanisha. Panisha picked the paper. That's real good. Panisha got the clay, Shelly. She said that was right. I'm trying to pick them up. I don't look much. She knows it is probably. For Tamuli, reared with only minimal exposure to spoken language, this is an impossible task. Unable to understand the speech, she can comprehend only that she is being requested to select something, but she never appears to understand why she should listen or what she should listen for. Testing such a control subject requires much patience on the part of both parties. She's not giving me anything, Shelly. Can I listen to Molly? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. Quiet. You need to settle down. Shh. Shh. Tamuli. Tamuli. Keys. 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 She's getting the cereal. 
Oh, Shelly. You want some more to eat? Okay, Tamoli would like to listen, Shelly. Okay, Tamoli's putting her headphones on. Okay, she's listening. She's not going to do anything, Shelly. Let me listen. Nor does Tamoli do any better in a less formal context or with longer utterances. Tamuli, sit down please. Right here. Right here, sit down. Thank you. Tamuli, could you throw your ball? You have that ball and you like it. Could you throw that ball? Throw your ball. Can you throw it? Can you throw that ball? Can you give your ball to Liz? Liz is waiting for your ball. Tamuli, back over here. Tamuli, back over here. Pamanisha, Tamuli's having trouble again. Pamanisha, would you throw the ball? Would you throw mm -hmm. the ball, please? Oh, you're throwing it to front. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was real good. Okay. Tamoli. Where's the soap? Soap. Yeah, I know you want an onion, but I want you to listen. Tamoli, can you open the soap? Where's the soap? Can you open the soap? Tamuli, look at all your things out here. Soap. Where's the soap? Soap. Can you open the soap? Pamanisha, Tamuli's having trouble. Pamanisha, would you open the soap for Tamuli, please? That's very nice. Thank you, Pamanisha, and you're even closing it up. See if you can make it go. Go ahead, drive it. Shut up, Fruff. Pamanisha's trying to drive it. Take Fruff. Go look for Pinky. Here, I try in the natural context to see if Pambanisha understands any language that refers to the golf cart she likes to ride on. Never before this scene has she been permitted to drive it. Yeah, try it. See if it'll work. Goodbye! Oh, be careful, <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck! Whoa. Good idea. Put it forward. <laughs> Tamuli, the control subject, seems to try hard to use the keyboard to communicate, as she sees her siblings do, but her symbol selection is random. She cannot distinguish the symbols either auditorily or visually, nor can she effectively imitate their use. Uh, tell me, tell me what you want. Look, talk about it. Can you tell me what you want? Trash. Look. Try again. 
Sit down. Tell me what you want. Hello. Tamale. Tamale, that's not right. Tamale. Tamale. Look. Mm -hmm. You want to be carry. Carry. Can you say carry? Carry. Carry. Say carry. No, carry. Carry. Say carry. Tamale. Say carry. Can you say carry? Carry. Right there. Look, Tamale. Tamale. Carry. Yes. No, right here. This one. Carry. Tamale. This one right here. Carry. Can you say that? No, look. Is it carry? Carry. Can you say that? Say carry. She can't do it. Look, Tamale. Yes, Sue will carry you. You can hop on my back. Come on. All right, let's go. Kanzi and Panmanisha's competencies go beyond language proper. Here we see the first time ever that Kanzi is asked to pair not words, but sounds with photographs. He understands and succeeds on this task from the first trial. All right, let's listen to the sound. Thank you, Kanzi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Conzi. Let's listen to the sound, okay? This one? This is what you hear? Okay, thank you. Kanzi and Benicia have achieved a completely different level of intellectual functioning than the other members of their family. Here, we see this manifest in part in Kanzi's ability to make a tool. Stone tool manufacture, demonstrated to Kanzi by the anthropologist Nick Toth, is another competency which Kanzi acquired observationally. Here, he attempts to make a sharp flake so that he can cut through a thick rope which holds a box shut. The box contains bananas. Kanzi's first flake is too dull. So he discards it and opts to make a better one. On the left is the first of the fragments that Kanzi used to try to cut the string. The second and ultimately successful flake is pictured uh, against the flint from which it came. We have also presented Kanzi with a series of video mazes. Here we see his first performance on a very simple maze.
After Gandhi became comfortable with simple mazes, more complex ones were presented. As with the novel sentences, Kanzi saw each maze only once. Thus, there was no opportunity to, quote, learn the maze. Negotiation reflected what Kanzi could perceive about the maze, not learning. Here you see typical consecutive trial one performance. Sometimes it is not the experimenters who set the task for Kanzi, but Kanzi himself. Here you see him attempt to blow up a balloon while simultaneously performing a complex video tracking task. It was Kanzi's idea to attempt this difficult feat. We believe that science has only just begun to understand and respect the minds of other animals.